Oh, what's in the box? It's another box. Jeez, these are heavy. Oh boy. That's backwards. All right. Well, I'll talk to you guys in a few months. Prime Weld really never fails to amaze me. I mean, absolutely incredible, the stuff that they do. Here's the thing, this is the original 225X that I reviewed four years before making this video. It's still running strong, it still gets used in classes, I still use it on a regular basis. They have impressed me so much with their product that I've actually gone out over the last couple of years and gotten two more 225X TIG machines. One of them is in my home garage and the other one sits in our convention exhibit. We call it the Arc Tank. Probably the most amazing part about this is how involved Prime Weld is with their customers. The thing is, this 325X, when it was released, it was said to be filled with features and functions that Prime Weld users have been asking for for some time. So when the 325X was offered up to me for the purpose of review, of course I jumped on it. I'm like, dang, I can't wait to dig into this thing, right? And as I'm sure you probably imagine, because you are seeing this video right now means that this machine passed with flying colors. It did, and yes, I do recommend it. We've put it through about six months worth of testing so far. We've given it to students because nobody blows up a machine better than a person that doesn't know how to use it. And of course, I put it through the ringer. It's pretty awesome. But before we can actually deep dive into all of this stuff and what it does, I do have to lay down some of that disclosure and transparency stuff for you. This 325X was provided by PrimeWeld free of charge for the purpose of making this review video and I do get to keep it. However, unlike most other videos where I do a review, I typically charge a production fee because, well, the time that I have to spend doing all of this and the equipment that we uh, use to do all of this with is very expensive. In this instance, I did not charge a production fee because I am hoping that you will go over to WeldMetalsOnline.com and purchase your PrimeWeld there directly from us so that way it supports us. We are an authorized PrimeWeld distributor. Distributor. Additionally, if you are looking for some help with welding, you can head over to weldcoach.com and book a live one-on-one -on -one class with me or one of our other awesome welding instructors. You can learn things like how to set up your machine properly or how to weld specific metals. All skill levels are welcome and you get to learn at your own pace. Oh, and you can use my personal discount code TFS10 on both websites. You'll get a little bit of savings on your purchase. And I guess that means that I've done advertising for myself now. I appreciate your consideration and I hope to see you over at Weld Coach to teach you guys how to weld. Let's talk about this machine. Actually, let's talk about both of these machines because what most people actually want to know is how do they compare? Now, Prime Weld's packaging is pretty legendary. I recall about four years ago during the 225 unboxing that the overkill full clamshell, corner protectors, and tight fit were rarely ever found on machines of this price tag. But with the 325X, the packaging has been given steroids. All of it still has the full clamshell, it has the corner protectors, and it even has metal corner protectors. The entire tightly packed box is then stuffed into a wooden crate that is tabbed and strapped. I think it would be safe to say that damage during shipping would be an extremely rare occurrence. But should you encounter any damage during shipping or any issues with the machine during your three year warranty period, well, PrimeWeld's famous like customer service, fast response, extremely no nonsense attitude about this stuff, I'm confident in saying that they will take care of you. Now, the biggest difference between these two machines here is the obvious 100 amp output, which means these ancillary components that are included in the box kind of have to be a little bit more robust on this side. So let's compare the two of these. Attached to this gigantically awesome solid brass hard to spring open clamp here is number one wire. It's obviously heavier duty or higher rated than the number two wire that comes with the 225X. The clamp on the 225 is also the stamped steel design with the braided throat. Now there's nothing really wrong with this clamp, and of course the 325 clamp is rated to handle higher amps, but I did notice a couple of people were complaining. They were like, well, why don't you get the better clamp with this one? Well, truth be told, it's not really necessary. However, if you do want to upgrade your 225, you can put the 325 clamp in it because the connection is exactly the same. 
This also applies to the stingers. If you look at the 225 stinger and compare that to the 325 stinger, you can see the 225 is a little bit smaller, which means it's rated to handle a little bit less. The 325 is much larger, rated to handle a little bit more. They both are, if I'm not mistaken, brass, but it's got some serious jaws in it. And of course, the cabling. We have number one cable and we have number two cable here. They are both interchangeable. The rest of your standard components are pretty much the exact same between the two units. We have our brass flow meter that's branded with Prime Weld. You got the trigger switch, little bag of consumables to start off with. We have the crimped argon hose, which is a lot better than the uh, what the hose clamp ones that usually come with other cheap machines. We obviously have our adapter for uh, 220 volt down to 110 volt or 115, 240, whatever it is that you have. It's the adapter for that one. And the pedals, they're exactly the same between the two of them. Now, this is actually kind of a fun in fact, when I did the original uh, Prime Weld review of this 225 here, this is the crappy pedal it came with, and I remember saying nobody likes that pedal. Prime Weld was actually listening, and about six months after my review video, they started uh, releasing the newer style pedal with uh, uh, for, for the same price of the machine there, or whatever the case is. So kind of awesome stuff. I wonder if they'll do anything to this machine after I'm done with this review. But let's talk about those torches real quick, because it gets a little bit confusing, especially when you start talking about the numbers and such, because the 225 ships with the 17 flex head or if you go water cooled then you get that upgrade but the 325x actually has a few different torches to choose from now I opted for the number 26 trim line torch from CK Worldwide for my machine. I chose to stay air cooled on it. The 26 is a 200 amp duty cycle rated torch, but trim line means that it uses the same size handle as the number 17. So it's basically the same size torch with a little bit more oomph. You can see that when you compare the two of these lines or these leads together. See how much larger this hose is versus that? That's because the cable inside is a lot more heavy duty. It's meant to handle that rating on it. But why would I choose this over, let's say, a water-cooled package? And should you use the 17 if that's available to it, which it is for this? Well, at the end of the day, it's really up to you. The confusing part is the duty cycle numbers. Duty cycle on a torch is not to be confused with the maximum allowable amperage a torch can withstand. In other words, if I have a 200 amp duty cycle torch, that means in a 10 minute window, I can run it at 200 amps and below and not have to worry about letting it cool down or anything else like that. But once I exceed that number, then I have to take uh, into careful consideration how long I've been welding so I can let it cool down for an appropriate amount of time. But this is actually more of a common sense thing because if your hand is actually sitting there and it feels like it's on fire while you're holding the torch, that means put the thing down and let it cool off. If you go water cooled, we effectively don't have that problem. But the problem with water cooling is, aside from the added expense to it, you cannot run a water cooled torch without the water cooler. So if you're thinking of going water cooled in the future and you're like, I'll order this machine with the water cooled torch but no cooler, you're going to melt down a water cooled torch. In the case of the 325X, you can actually get it with a number 18 water cooled torch or a number 20 water cooled torch. I prefer the 20 size because it's much smaller and more nimble and it's easier to do precision welding work with it. Whereas the 18 feels like a motorcycle handlebar, if you will, when you run it. But if you're going to stick with air cooled, I definitely recommend the 26 trim line torch as it's going to be the most universal for your, your application. You can push all 325 amps through this thing and you'll be fine for shorter runs, if you will. Something I should actually point out or mention real quick here is you're seeing both of these torches with the installed CK Worldwide Nylon TIG Torch lead cover. These are not included in the Prime Weld purchases. I installed these on my own. It's a good idea to keep your leads protected from like fraying and holes, punctures, burns, etc. and the nylon covers do it well. But again, they are not included. Now that pretty much wraps it up for what's in the box when you open it all up, but what are the major differences between these two units? Of course it is said that the 325 has some additional things to it that the 225 does not. And the first thing is pretty obvious when you turn it on. The power switch for the 325 is actually located on the front of the unit, whereas the 225 is located on the rear of the unit. If you ask me personally, I don't have a preference. It makes no difference to me which, which side it's on or anything else like that. I do see you know, people's gripes or complaints about having to reach around the machine, but I mean, how hard is it, right? Well, the second thing that you're also gonna notice, if I did turn this on right now, you would hear the fan that's constantly going with it, and this one is not. There is a fan inside of here, but it's fan on demand. Now, most people would say this is an amazing thing, and sometimes I agree, but actually the fan on demand is on my gripes list, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Now on the front of the machine, the layout is pretty much the exact same, but the 325 has been given a little bit of a facelift. 
You can see instead of toggle switches like what is found on the 225, the 325 has buttons on it, which is kind of a nice touch. There are also some additional parameter readouts on the main display. If you look to the right of the readout, you'll see LEDs, and they indicate amps, seconds, percentage, and frequency. Now, these readouts will automatically appear when you make an adjustment and then default back to the main amps when not in use. Some of the ranges have been changed or broadened on the 325. The 225 has an AC frequency range from 40 to 200 hertz, while the 325 ranges from 20 to 300 hertz. It's a nice addition. The low amperage range has also been extended. On the 225, the low amp range on DC is 10 amps, with the low amperage AC being at 20. But on the 325, it has a low amp range of 5 amps on DC with a 10 amp range on AC. And for those of you who wanted to know if the arc start is considered stable on low end, well, here it is firing only at 5 amps DC and 10 amps AC. And here we are tapering off slowly from 100 amps down to 5 and 10 respectively. I'll let you be the judge of it, but I think it's pretty smooth. The other obvious difference between these two is the high end. The 225 amps will get you into single pass quarter inch territory with aluminum, whereas the 325 will get you into 3 8 inch territory, single pass, depending on the overall part size. And because I did see a lot of requests in my comments on the socials to run a 3 8 pass, here it is. Love to say that I can get an arc shot on this, but holy wow, is that stuff ever ridiculously bright. And of course, this is really, really hot too. As far as the size of the 325 compared to the 225, the 325 is two inches longer, but is two inches shorter. It's also a quarter inch wider, and it has 20 more pounds of base weight on it, with the 325 weighing in at 74 pounds, and the 225 weighing in at only 54 pounds. Now, overall, I think that the 325 is a fantastic machine. I mean, it delivers a really nice, pleasurable welding experience, especially for this price tag. You don't normally find these kind of features, functions, and even you know, vast majority of uh, parameters on, on a machine of this price tag, which is absolutely incredible. But there are a couple things that I noticed uh, that I'm not quite fond of, and maybe there's some things that you should take into consideration before you purchase the 325X. The first thing is this really is a machine for the big kids, if you will. It is a dual voltage machine, but uh, that uh, you might as well just consider it just like a single voltage unit because on 110 volt input, you're limited to a maximum allowable amperage output of only 120 amps. Depending on the size of your part, that's pretty much going to limit you to about eighth inch aluminum or so. It's that's not a lot, so you might as well just consider this thing to be a 220 volt only machine. It's big, it's not meant to be so portable and stuff like that, and of course with that limited range, not great. The second thing I started to cover earlier, but we're definitely going to get into it, it's the fan. It, this is an on-demand fan, but in all honesty, it doesn't take much to turn that fan on when you start welding. It happens almost instantaneously. And even after very, very short bursts or runs of a part when you're welding, it takes a long time for it to turn off. That's not even the biggest thing. The biggest thing is the loudness of the fan. This thing is super friggin' loud. It's so loud that if you put a pair of 225Xs running constantly or full time, they are both quieter combined than the 325 when it's on. Me personally, I would rather have something more like a fan that's constantly on, like the 225. That way I know it's always working. And in this case, it's a little bit quieter than having the 325. But other than that, I would definitely say that the 325 is a very solid unit and definitely worth your consideration. Now, I did have a couple people ask me about stick welding, but I'm really not the authority on stick welding because I don't really do it very much. And for what this is, I don't really think you would buy it for stick welding, but I'll leave it up to somebody else who actually does do stick welding to do the review and specific parameters on stick welding. I can't be very objective if, well, I don't really have that much experience with it. The biggest question that I did receive though throughout all of the time of doing this is, is it worth it to upgrade from the 225 to the 325? Or is this good for hobby use or whatever the case is? Well, I'll let you decide that after watching all of this video because, well, really, you're the only one who can decide that. But if you ask me personally, I am under that belief that it's better to have something and not need it than to need something and not have it. So if this fits in your budget, I would say get it. 
But if this is all you can afford and that's all you want to spend, then either one of them is a fantastic choice. But that 325 is pretty smooth. Now, if this video has convinced you to buy a 325, again, I would hope you consider going over to WeldMetalsOnline.com to make your purchase. And of course, you can head over to WeldCoach.com afterwards, and I'll teach you either how to run it, set it up, or weld just about anything. Or many of the other fine coaches over on WeldCoach would do the same. That is all I've got on this episode. If you've got any questions, go ahead and throw them down in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys on the next one.